All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and crank up. It sounds like everybody can hear me, and if guys join in late, that's fine. Uh, so this stuff is all coming out of my offensive system. A lot of y'all have seen a lot of these clips on my YouTube or my Twitter or whatever. I've got, uh, I'm trying to put these sessions up in the blog as well, so if you get kicked out or want to go back later and watch it, you can do that. Um, I just basically am loading them up on there, so feel free to reach out if you got any questions we get done and this is supposed to be interactive you know this is not me giving an hour long lecture i don't like doing that so if you've got a question on something you know jump in the chat which is if you're new to zoom i think everybody kind of knows now but if you're new to zoom it's at the bottom of your screen ask a question make sure i hit what you came on here to listen because that's basically um basically the reason that you're here is to get answers to what you want to do. And if you're like me, I go to different systems and kind of pick out the best and we've kind of put it all together. So you may not even be a wing T guy, but you like, you want to look at how to use jet motion in your offense. Uh, and so this stuff I think can apply to any offense. If you're not, even if you're not a wing T person, is the idea of kind of building series, okay? Uh, which to us, we try to build our offense based off a of series. And so, uh, what that means for you non-wing T guys is basically the same backfield action has a base play, an inside run, a counter, a play action, and a flood type pass. Okay, so for us, jet motion, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go through all the things that we pair with it, but it's a series look to a defense, especially a 17, 18 year old kid. When that motion comes. We don't want them to be able to automatically trigger on one thing. So we want to have multiple things to protect it and take advantage of how they're handling motion. Because teams handle motion very different. Teams that are in man-to-man -man have a real hard time with motion. And teams that are not in man-to-man -man still have to spin guys down. And, you know, a lot of times you can protect your run game um, by using motions. You can also protect your pass game. And so that's the reason we like jet motion. This is my contact information, guys. If, if you've got a question after this, shoot me a text, uh, email me, whatever you want, and I'll be sure to get back with you. And, and that's my website. I'll be putting this up, and I've put the other sessions up in the blog area on my website. So if you go to the website, there's an area that says blog. Really, it's kind of turned into more of a video area where I'm putting a lot of the videos that we're doing on these Zoom sessions. And I've got some articles on there as well. All right, so the goal today is to talk about JET. I'm talking about it from a wing T perspective. We were in the gun T and to me, we've paired JET sweep kind of with, the, with, the, with, with our version of JET, which, which is not gonna hit as wide. It's not like the rocket sweep you see a lot in wing T stuff. We've kind of made it our own. And then we've paired it with multiple plays. And that's what I think I'm not doing anything that's just earth shattering. I think the way we package it together is something that may be able to help you. And, uh, and I'll talk today about really the fixes. You know, uh, what do I look for? You know, what are, some, what are some defenses we like to run jet against more? And what are some things we got to fix for? So here's all the things we'll run off a of jet. And I don't even have Belly Reed on there, although I'm going to show you one clip because we're going to be working a lot of that this year but I'm by no means an expert. I've been doing a lot of research on it to get good at it. So really, we feel like we have nine different concepts off of jet motion. If you've heard me talk before, you know I'm a big believer in simple and kind of a rule of three guy. And so we have three rollout passes uh, that we pair with our jet, but we don't have to run with jet. We have three quick side runs that we run with jet, but we don't have to run with jet because we can tag it. So it makes it look more complicated to a defense. We like running some things with jet because of the problems it gives people. And so that's what we'll talk about today is why run jet instead of just run that play. Okay? And then we've got uh, some play actions and some kind of specials time for I'll get into today. Everybody hear me? Okay. Now, if you've got any questions, guys, as I start rolling, just put them in the chat, and I'll try to make sure I hit them. Okay. All right, so here's what happens when you run jet. Here's the problems that you may get into or that we get into when you're trying to run jet sweep. Okay. One is you've got a really good five technique. So against a four-front team where they've got a really good five technique, 
there's a couple different things we're going to do, and I've got answers down there below. And again, I, I want to have a little time at the end for questions too, and the board behind me to kind of go over. But a good five technique, you got to have some answers for how you're going to handle him. So we'll run a lot of, we, we get a normal forefront. So a one and a five, which is normal to us. Okay, we're going to run, we are going to still run jet. And I'll kind of talk about, I'll show you a clip how we're going to almost double team that five technique. But we're also going to run QB belly a lot in that look because they live a natural bubble in the defense in the B gap. Okay, we're going to run belly read this year is one of the answers we want for it. Or we're going to influence that kid. We're going to see how he reads things. Is he an upfield player or is he reading your tackles block? So we'll actually do what we call some influence blocking with him. Uh, you can have aggressive DBs can be a big problem with jet. You run jet sweep and that safety comes shooting down there and you can't get him blocked. That's a problem. Okay, so our answers to that are generally the passing game. They're going to be aggressive with the DBs. You got to be willing to take the easy passes that they're giving up. Okay, um, or are they inside linebackers killing you? Play side inside linebackers coming to get you. Okay, then there's a couple of things that we will do. We'll do, again, we'll do QB belly, okay, which is a big play for us. Uh, we'll do belly read, which is a big play for us. We'll do counters. If they're flying in there, we'll do counters. We'll do influence blocks. And we'll show you one on here where we block buck sweep and we run jet sweep. And so I've, some of y'all might have already seen that, but that's an answer we have to handle your inside linebacker, okay? Or we'll run the same play and not run motion. If they're triggering real hard off the motion, okay, we'll just, we'll just run Q jet and just snap it to the quarterback and run jet with him or put our F on the strong side and run it with him. Okay? And so there's different ways we have answers built in. Okay? And as you guys are going through, guys, be sure to just any questions you've got, put them in here. Most of y'all have seen this, but this is our base way we line up. So our wing, which is our B to the right, is going to be our jet runner. And now there's times we've got to personnel him, which I know to a defense um, is, a, is a tip, is a tell. So sometimes we'll do it is we'll make a switch call with our F and our B. We just say switch. And we move our better runner to wing. And we move our better blocker, who a lot of times is our B, to F. And we'll do it really quickly. You can do it through a shift. Or you can just do it as you get to the line of scrimmage, make it a real quick shift. They might figure it out. They will figure it out who it is. Uh, but usually I'm still getting the ball to my better player. And so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you knowing we tend to do certain things because we feel like we have built-in answers and counters off of those. Okay. So we're going to talk about jet first. Okay. So jet for us, and the reason we like this play uh, is we're going to block jet the exact same with our pretty much from our quick guard all the way to our tight end are all going to block jet belly and belly read the exact same so once you've taught the blocking this is the same to them okay so every lineman except for our quick tackle is going to block the same thing every time we call any run to the quick side that's in this series all right you do have to teach your strong guard not to chase okay so what will happen a lot of times is he'll pull through he's trying to lead and we're really running jet. And so they'll go chasing it. We still want him to block the inside backer. We still want him to re lead up on the inside backer, just like we're running belly or belly read, because we don't want them to see a difference. Okay? So the only guy that needs to know the difference is our quick tackle. If you've seen my series before, you guys know that our quick tackle is also the kid that has to learn all of our RPOs. So if you're organizing practice, a lot of times we're running this stuff in our practice area, okay? We're going to take our quick tackle with our receivers, okay? Our Fs, our Bs, and our, uh, and our quarterback, and we're going to work jet while the linemen are down there working a different drill. So he kind of gets moved over the receivers because he's got to be a pretty spatial blocker. And you'll kind of see some of the concepts as I get through the film. Right. I think I've got it drawn up here for you again. I'm going to skip ahead to it drawn up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about. Move this over here. I'm actually going to X up the chat. All right. So here's what I'm talking about. Our tight end, our strong tackle, our strong guard, our center, and our quick guard, they're all blocking basically belly to the quick side. They're all blocking the same thing. 
okay? We teach belly to the quick side the same way we would teach belly to the strong side. So the center knows he's gonna block on backside. So if I have a one technique to the strong side and a three away from me, which we get a lot, okay? We have to make a decision there. A lot of times we'll go ahead and double that because we feel like we can cut that three technique. If we can't, you've got to make a back call so he knows to go block back. A lot of times on quick belly, we want him to block back even if it's a three. Our guard is going to block uh, number one. So usually for us, when we're running jet, that's going to be a one technique. It's not always, okay? But usually that's what it's going to be, or a head up nose. And then our quick tackle is going to be handling number two, and his block depends on the call. So if we're calling belly, we obviously want to turn him out. And if we're calling jet, we want to turn him in. Okay. That's the base way we're running it. The strong tackle and the tight end are basically blocking inside gap. And if nothing is there, they'll hinge backside. Okay. Our receivers, I'm going to show you drawn up here, will tighten up depending on how much you're going to allow us to tighten up. So the way we teach our slot receiver is I want you to get as tight to the line of scrimmage as, I'm sorry, as wide from the uh, tackle as possible until the outside linebacker starts getting inside of you. The minute he wants to line up inside of you, tighten up more. Because all we're trying to do is create a little bit of a gap. If we can create a little bit of a gap and move that outside linebacker a little bit wider and create more of a, so we almost look at our A and our X receiver in this play on jet, as additional linemen, because we're creating extra gaps. We're creating bubbles and voids in the defense, okay? All right, I'm gonna go back to receiver block here real quick. Okay, so receivers are going to crack. We're gonna crack outside linebacker, inside linebacker. So your A is gonna go crack the inside linebacker, and your X generally is gonna handle the outside linebacker. If the guy wants to line up outside of him, he may go crack a safety. We want him to crack inside. Okay, um, they're gonna block first thing inside. Okay, we like kill shots, but that's become illegal now. So you gotta go in there open-handed. Uh, so we've had to really work that with our guys, all right? And then our running back basically is blocking this like you would block power if you were a guard. And so he's gonna come out of you and kick the first thing that shows up. We tell him if the receivers whiff on their blocks, that block may happen immediately to an outside backer who's stunning. Okay. If they make their blocks, you may kick a corner. There might be times where they're in man-to-man. -man. We get that a lot where they're, they're gonna, there's nobody there. So you just log it. Okay. And then we tell our B to follow our F just like he was a strong guard. Okay. So wherever he goes, if he kicks, you cut up inside. If he wraps, you go outside. Okay. So it's a pretty simple concept. All right. Then our wing back. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we're running read on this, belly read. We don't always do it. We want to take first daylight with these guys. So if we see daylight, we want to cut it up inside and take whatever. I, I won't yell at our kids if they'll cut it up and they get me five, six yards. You know, we're not the fastest team. So we're going to take first daylight that we see. Okay. Now there's it drawn up again. I'm going to stop it right here and give you a chance for any questions you've got. I'm gonna pull up my chat because I'm kind of here by myself. So if you guys have any questions in the chat, am I clear on what I'm talking about, okay? Um, or are there things you wanna make sure I go through? Because I am gonna talk through, hey, there's a three front and a four front and a whatever front, okay? But I wanna make sure you're getting it. We have run, we've played with Jet back to the tight end side and this year we're considering running basically the Jet read back to the tight end wing side, but we have not much. For us, we're, we're color coordinated, Jason, so we're red or blue. Like if this formation you're seeing on your screen would be blue, strong left. Formation you were seeing that I had drawn up would be red, strong right. And then we tag everything off of that, okay? Uh, tight end and strong tackle are gonna block inside gap. So if there's a guy inside, they have, they're gonna scoop that guy, okay? We're not going second and third level with guys. You can, there's nothing wrong with that. I just feel like that's a more expensive teaching proposition for them. So we just block inside gap. If no, no defender blitzes or lines up there, we will hinge back, okay? Um, all right, so this, okay, and then we, yeah, we run a bunch of Q-Jet. I don't have a lot of film on this because last year our quarterback was 240. 
Jet was not a good play with him. This year we'll run a lot of quarterback jet. Uh, we run motion a lot of times near the goal line or against man-to-man -man teams. That's kind of our answer for man-to-man. -man. If there's zone, we love the RPO world. Uh, and we love not motioning a lot because zone teams generally handle motion better than man teams. If you get man, we have run a lot of jet. We've started recognizing that we'll run jet on the, near the goal line a lot and had a lot of success with it, which goes against everything I've ever wanted to do because I've always thought quarterback sneak at the one, you know, but think about defenses and what they're doing. Uh, we had fourth and goal at the one first conference game of the year. And we ran, uh, we ran jet and scored a touchdown on it. Okay. Uh, for our tailback, we want him to look the same as he would if we're running buck sweep. So he's going to be heels on the toes of the quarterback. Okay. So that looks like buck to a defense. That looks like sword to, or I'm sorry, belly to a defense. That's how he lines up every time if we can do it. Okay. All right. Keep your questions coming, guys. I'm going to go start showing you jet here. So this is man to man jet. Okay. So this team's playing us in man to man. We're going to run jet over here to the right side. I want you to notice, so they're in man, they're in man. One of the things we really love cracking on, okay, is if we run, if we crack in man, in man to man, we feel like we're blocking two for one. If you've heard me talk before, you've probably heard this before. If we crack inside, the guy who's on us is going to run with us because he's playing man to man defense. And so it's been a great play for us. We love Jet against man to man teams, okay. Um, backside. Three and five. Yeah, I've got a film of backside three and five. And so I'll show you a little bit on, on that. That's a great question, by the way, because three and five is a, more of an issue. That under front, okay? We don't like jet as much against under fronts, but we can run it. And I'll show you some things we'll do off of it. Run back is a blocker, receives a cracker. Cracking, how do you reconcile what you all said to your strong side? Okay, yeah, we'll run some Q jet stuff. Eric, that's a good question. And we'll also run some draw where the, court, the running back will turn his eyes like he's going to block, and then he comes back and runs the draw, depending on who the better athlete is. This year, it was our running back, so he ran the draw. Next year, it's our quarterback, so we may run QB belly back the other way and let them all block Jet this way. Okay. All right, so here's, here's Jet. Okay, you're going to see right here, we actually tighten up late, and we crack inside with both our guys. And again, we didn't even block the corner. Like, we did a terrible job right there of blocking the corner. Okay, but he's playing man-to-man, -man, so by the time he recognizes what's coming, okay, it's really hard for him to get there. But if you'll watch what I'm talking about, we pause it here, our slot's going to go block the inside linebacker. Our X is going to go block the next guy inside, which happens to be a guy in man-to-man. -man. Our quick tackle right here is going to handle this. They're actually uh, – because we're near the goal line, they were pinching. They're coming inside, so they kind of set it up for us, okay? Um, so he'll hook a very easy play. And then everyone on the other side is blocking right here. They're all blocking QB belly, okay, QB belly. And there's your handoff. There it goes. Now, we probably could have scored either way on this. Quarterback could have pulled this and run QB belly, and you've still got to play because of the way we block it, okay? That's what Jet will look like against man-to-man -man on the goal line. You got an end zone shot's a little cleaner. So here you go. This is your forefront team. We have a five technique. Fortunately for us, he was not a stud. Okay, but here's how we would teach it if he was a stud. Number seven here has tightened up. We had worked this throughout the week where he's going to come through the butt. Okay, he's going to come through the butt of this five technique right there. All right. Uh, our quick tackle is going to try to get vertical push and try to hook him knowing he's got help coming from the slot. Number six, ought to go block inside as well. Remember from right here, so that's our quick guard, all the way to the tight end, all they know is they're blocking Q belly. Uh, Scott, we were not reading. We might have been reading on that. was 2017. We might have been reading on that. We are not reading on the ones from this year. We just were not quite able to do that. I love to read. We're going to work back into that this year. Okay, uh, Jet. For us, if we're running uh, jet the way we ran it before, we would read the inside linebacker. And I'll show you a clip on that. Uh, all of these, it's straight no RPO. It's a straight give. So right here, we're giving the ball. I called it. I love it if you can have your quarterback where he's able to read it. Unfortunately, our guy this year, just he, that was not his strength. So um, Slot, pin and pull. 
we can. We can. We can do all kinds of stuff with our receivers. We just make switch calls with them a lot of times where we'll crack and then we'll lead. But we try to keep base stuff as much as we can if we're gaining yards. So here you go. Here's your jet look. Okay. Now, he's supposed to be going through that defensive end who went ahead and helped us out by not being very good. Okay. 67, here's your three technique. And here's the one adjustment you got to make if you're going to run jet into an under front. Okay. His normal call on jet for us is to block like belly. So if he blocks belly, he's actually going to fan, he's actually going to, uh, I'm sorry, if he's got a three technique, like he's got kind of fighting his shoulder here, he's actually going to push him out. Okay. So we've got to make sure he's aware, hey, if you've got a three this week, or if you've got a three, we're going to run jet, you do have to work to hook him. Okay. And watch our other backside guys blocking belly like normal. And there goes Jet. Okay. It's a nice, simple play. Watch seven right here. He'll release. He checks the butt. I think he actually got a solo call there, which just means I got him on myself. Okay. And then we work to the inside backward. He does a good enough job. You can kind of see what your receiver block has to look like. It's just, just a little bit. That's all we need. Just a little bit, and then we're there. We're, you notice we're running this into the boundary. I was trying not to get a flag. These officials were calling it all night. As you can see, they call it on this one. We're trying to run it. We run it into the boundary. You see how tight it hits. It's almost us like buck hits. It's super tight, okay, super tight. We get decent job on the kick, not great. And that guy's got six yards right there in that void. Okay, And you're making DBs tackle them, okay. Uh, free safety coming downhill will be a lot of play action. We'll show you a good play action. Gray, is this a good question? All right, so that's how we'll handle a good five. We'll get a double. We'll work it. Make sure I'm watching this. Everybody in. Okay. Um, all right. So here's what it looks like against a 3-4 team. So it's 3-4 team. We're running jet. And this is not perfect because our running back was a sophomore in this one. Okay. And he doesn't go kick like he's supposed to. Down in distance. Okay. It's third and one. Okay. Teams generally are going to blitz on that. So it's kind of to us. A safe, ah, I'm gonna go back, sorry guys. A safe call, okay? So what that means is this, you know, you get into, a lot of people ask me all the time, what do you do to blitzers? This is one of the things we do to blitzers because we completely negate your inside blitzers. If you wanna blitz inside A, B gap and shoot our guards and try to blow stuff up, go for it. This is kind of our answer for it, okay? Because now we're protected. Uh, we're blocking down, we're kicking out, and you see the void you get right there. Okay, now, 23 didn't block the corner, or that would have been a really good play. You watch what I'm talking about, about your running back. He's got to continue to run and know something's going to show up. You so see he starts dancing around. We want him to run out there and kick him. Okay? He's gotten a lot better since he was a sophomore. But if he'll just run straight and kick, our running back will cut off at him. Okay? I showed you this one because it hits wider. Okay? It hits a little bit wider than we normally hit. Okay, but you see the block number three gives right there. That's all we really need. I'd rather he was open-handed. All he's got to do, so receiver coaching-wise for you guys, we want to aim. So three's going to aim to the upfield shoulder. Okay, the upfield shoulder. Let me stop it right here. So we want to aim. That's actually a great path by number three. Aim for the upfield shoulder. Invite this kid to try to go underneath. And as soon as he goes underneath, just shove him down there because we're going to hit it quick enough that it's not going to matter. Boom, boom, and if 23 had blocked anyone, been more than three yards, okay? And just to give you an idea of this can be not just an explosive touchdown play where you get at the edge. It can be your four-yard, five-yard, six-yard play against blitzers, okay? If we have a four, it's an even easier play for us, okay? Yeah, we will run uh, with our quarterback. We will let him keep it. Uh, we call that Q-belly, okay? We call that Q-belly. Um, and we'll lead with it, and then we're going to run some belly read where we'll let him read it, depending on his ability level. This kid you're looking at, quarterback, a little bit better at reading things. And so you, the clips you're going to see later on of him keeping it or him reading it, okay? Um, the outside linebacker shoots up field and just sits at one yard deep. We'll tighten those receivers up a little bit more. We can run this as a bypass, just like we would with Buck, and send the receivers on and kick them. The problem generally becomes – uh, he's going to condense that hole down. So what we would rather do is condense both our receivers way down, like you saw on this clip, condense them way down, force that outside linebacker to choose. Okay, And by the way, that's how exactly how we teach our outside linebackers is to get up and turn. 
But we also teach our outside linebackers, if they've condensed down, you don't want to ever line up head up because their immediate block is on that outside backer. So we'll condense it this short if we have to. We would rather it be more like this, okay? But if that outside linebacker wants to condense all the way down, we're gonna condense down with him. We wanna make your corner tackle us, okay? Quick tackle on a five technique is a pull, it's a, uh, I'm sorry, it's a, yeah, it's a pull push. So on this, you'll watch a quick tackle. He's gonna attack, get his hands on the guy. He's gonna pull him in with his inside hand and push him out with his outside hand. And remember, if he's good enough, we'll double him with the A. We'll tell the A to run through his back hip. We're not asking you to block a D in, but you can seal him off, okay? Um, jet to the boundary generally hides your tendencies better. So Scott, that's a good question. I like it either way, but you've got, you know, when you start making tendencies happen like we do by condensing guys, you've got to be willing to break tendencies. And I'll show you a couple tendency breakers, but yes, I like it into the boundary a lot. Okay. All right, uh, this is the second play off of that. So now we're going to run the same look to a defense. We're going to block the same blocking with every lineman except for the quick tackle. So now we're going to run what we call QB belly. I wrote it up here as ISO because it really that's more of what it is. If you watch my session the other day on strong belly, it's the same teaching, except now your F has become your B. He's your lead on play side, and your uh, strong guard becomes your wrap to the backside linebacker, okay? That's our jet, that's kind of our, you got a good five technique, who's blowing up jet, they're trying to make plays. Okay, let's run ISO. Okay, so here you go, same team we saw earlier. Same thing we saw earlier. They're playing us in an under front. This is somebody's asking about an under front. So here's an under front. So now before the play goes on, notice we've condensed down our wide receivers because we knew that they'd figured out that's a tendency for us. So we condensed them down, okay? We wanted them to think it was the same thing. And then what's gonna happen right here is number one is gonna lead on play side linebacker who when the motion happens is gonna run himself out of the play, okay? These two guys know their rule. So uh, strong uh, center blocks on backside. So there it is on backside. Quick guard blocks number one. There's nobody in here, nobody here. There's number one. That's my guy. Take him wherever the path of least resistance is, which would be out. Okay. And then you have a five technique. So our tackle is going to block number two, who's a five technique. Okay. So there's going to be block out, block out by their rules, block back, wrap to backside linebacker, step hinge. There's nobody there, but if 10 blitzed, he would pick him up. Step hinge, nobody there, but if somebody shot his face, he would go and we're gonna run jet motion. Okay, so here comes jet motion, there's your pull, QB ISO, that's a safety tackle on our kit. Okay, so it's a safety we're not gonna be able to account for. You'll notice, actually what ends up happening is the guy number one was supposed to block, ran off for the jet. We run jet a bunch, it looks the same to that kid. You watch the quarterback too, there's not even a fake. We're not reading with this kid. He was a great kid, great quarterback for me, but Ball security with him and reading, not going to happen great. And so to protect him, we just told him to pull the ball to his belly. Okay, If your quarterback is a little more advanced, you can actually read this stuff, which makes it hit a lot better. But that's a safety tackle on us for a gain of about eight. And you see the giant hole that opens up with the same exact blocking. Okay, Same exact blocking you normally would have. We tell our quick guard and our strong guard on any time they're wrapping on belly, you run full speed and if you whiff, our athletic guys should make the move off of you. So here's a wide angle of the same play. Notice we condensed our receivers down again to give the same look, okay? Only thing I don't like is that running back's kind of giving away what's going on by his stance. But you're seeing, here comes your motion, there's belly, there it goes, okay? And there's a gain of whatever that is, about nine or 10, okay, off the same look. So that's quick belly off a jet, okay? Now, one thing you have to deal with, I don't know if I've got it drawn up on here, so let me go to stop share for a second, is if you've got a 3-4 team and you've got a four who's playing in there, like you have a nose who's slanting backside to the strong side, and you have a four, okay, who's maybe shooting inside, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with that guy with our guard tackle on belly. Because their rules would say, the tackle's got him, lock him down, the guard goes to double the nose. That's all okay, that's fine. What ends up happening is you'll run at a gap wider. 
and we're okay with that. But you can also make tag calls in there, like we'll call a fan call, so our guard knows to block out on that guy. I'm sorry, call a fan call, our F knows to go block the outside linebacker who becomes a problem, kind of like we would do on strong belly. So if we have an outside linebacker overhang, we may send our F there, wrap with the strong guard, we're still protected, but now we're getting it blocked just like we did on strong belly. We're trying to keep our stuff the exact same, okay, the exact same as we do both sides. So if kids have to move, one of the things we do is we play our kids on one side. So that means our strong guys play strong, our quick guys play quick. But I live in the real world where my backup quick tackle might be my starting strong tackle. So when they move, we try to keep things similar so they know, okay, belly, these are my rules. That doesn't change if I'm strong, or I'm quick. Strong guard is probably my backup quick guard. Same deal for him. So trying to keep your rules the same. So if you haven't yet, I'd go back and watch my strong belly to get more concepts on that. But we try to keep our rules the same kind of for that reason. Okay. All right, before I jump into uh, uh, read, which I've only got one clip on that because we're just now getting to where we're gonna run that more. I told you guys why. What questions do we have on quick belly? I know about reading, I'm, I'll talk about how I would do that, but I don't, I'm not the guru there. It's something we're learning. Okay. And I had a question from uh, somebody about slot, uh, slot on the line of scrimmage. Usually our X is actually always on. On this, we put our A on because we were doubling that five technique. So that's a good question. You know, we'll, we, our receivers know they can adjust and the game plan that week was he was going to be on. You can see him eyeballing that five technique because he was given a help there. We don't cross block, quick tackle, quick guard. I've seen a lot of wing T teams do that, and they've had a lot of success with it. It's just something that I think is expensive, and it's just we haven't put time in. Not nothing wrong with it, but we don't do that. And then every situation where we don't pull a strong guard, no. Uh, we'll always pull strong guard if we're running quick belly. Uh, we'll down block, railroad it, whatever you got to do. We want him to pull and wrap. So we're going to make adjustments off everybody else. Okay. Um, we can run QB strong belly off the same look. We will do that a lot this year, more than likely, because we got a good, better running quarterback. We also can run the same play. You can run, for us, we'll run quick belly out of trips. We'll get in trips and run an RPO and run quick belly at the same time, which is not really the discussion for today, but we can run quick belly and pair it with RPOs and that kind of stuff. Okay? Um, if you've got a QB you don't want to just pound up in there, uh, you'll see the guy we had before. A lot of times what we would do is we would go trips, okay, and put our F to the strong side and run the same concept where we would run an RPO over here and then hand the ball on quick belly to our F and let your quarterback read it. Or you can even do same side. So like have your F instead of lead, he'll step back and let the B clear and then hand it to your F. You just lose a blocker. And anytime you're not going to run your quarterback, which I get it, there's a couple of years I've not been able to do it, you lose a blocker on stuff. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those deals you got to figure out how you're going to balance that out. We did it with RPOs. That was our answer to it. And I'll show you a couple here. Uh, I think I've got a couple on this. All right, so the other one would be what we would call quick belly read. And, again, I'm not going to do a bunch on this because it's been two years since we've really run this. It's just because of – personnel I've had. Uh, we like to read actually the inside linebacker on this. So uh, somebody was asking about that. So here basically you can see the receivers tighten up again, right? We're going to run our line. All they know we're running the same play and the quarterback is going to read the inside linebackers. If I can pause it here for you guys. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, once I learn to work technology, I'll be, I'll be in a good spot. All right, let's see, I'm skip it ahead. Okay, so we're going to read this inside linebacker right here. So we run quick belly, okay? Now we can read both. So we can actually down block here and read this guy if we want to, but we were wanting to read him. because That was their best player, we thought. So we just, it's quick belly. I'm sorry, it was uh, jet read. And you just read like you're reading a book. Okay, and we're going to read that guy. Now, this year, because it's going to be a more extensive part of our playbook, we want to be able to read the five technique, which a lot of teams do on power read already. And we want to be able to read the inside linebacker. So we'll have a tag that we'll make off of that. But this year we're running it. 
we were only reading inside linebacker off of it because we didn't want to mess with blocking with everybody else and put in all that. We, our quick tackle already has a lot on his plate, so we didn't want to put more on his plate. But you'll see right here that uh, he's reading. Quarterback's eyes are on this kid. When he takes off to make the tackle, we pull it. You can see that kid didn't expect it to get pulled, and we just follow through the hole. Okay, that was a uh, that was how we would run belly read. Okay, you can do it a hundred ways. So I'm not the guru, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because there's guys you can probably get a lot of this stuff from. Watch any Oklahoma film, and they are awesome at it. And so, but that's something we have paired with it to protect us. You got a really good. Inside linebacker, okay, we'll read him. We've got a really good five technique this year, we're gonna read him. Okay, and so it's just different concepts you can do. All right, the other thing we'll do is we use influence blocks. One of them I don't have on here, so I wanna just kind of show you, and I can show you on, uh, on the whiteboard if I need to, but I think I can do it here. So if this kid right here was a headgear reader, was a headgear reader, so a really good five technique, great hands, would fight you outside. We get a lot of those, you know, good, good ball players. So what we'll do a lot of times is we will down block, we'll down block with our quick tackle and we'll wrap the quick guard outside of him. We just call it false. So those two guys know it's called false. So quick tackle blocks down, quick guard wraps around and we're using that kid's technique against him. And so we'll do that on rollout passes We'll do that on jet sweep. We'll do that on anything we want to get the edge. If we've had years before where we literally couldn't block that kid, but he would block himself because he was so well coached. You know, he was really good at reading. So we used his technique against him. We just called it false. We just down block with our quick tackle. We wrap our quick guard around, and now we got the edge. And so it's just something you can do if you get a really good five technique, okay? Or you could just run belly read. Let him squeeze. The problem with that is they may be running a spill kind of deal there. So just something just to throw at you. The other thing we'll do is we'll pair, we'll pair buck sweep blocking. We call this joker. So this would be called jet. I've got it up here false ends. You can call it whatever you want to. We call it joker. So both guards know they pull opposite. Everyone else in the field is running jet. Okay. But the guards hear the word joker and they know, oh, I go opposite on joker. And so they're gonna go opposite. You've seen me, you've probably seen some of this before. I think I put some of this on Twitter, but here it is again for those of you who might not have got it. So we're gonna run jet sweep. I usually will do this early in the game. So we're gonna do this probably in the first drive or two. We're gonna run jet sweep to the top. We're gonna pull both guards opposite. And I've got a guy in the box watching this guy and this guy. Do we wanna figure out who you're keying in our offense? Are you keying our guards? Cause we're wing T. Are you keying our backfield because we are somewhat spread? You know, what are you guys doing? So we'll pull the guards opposite. And when they pull opposite, you see this kid right here and this kid right here, they wanted to run with Jet because they saw Jet to our fastest kid, but they had been coached all week, play the guards. And so what happens a lot of times is you get that. They run into each other and they're worthless. And now what I've done in my mind is I've slowed them down the rest of the game because they've been taught all week Follow the guards, follow the guards. And now I just showed them, no, that isn't gonna work. So now we're gonna come, we actually came back to this play multiple times. This team won the state championship in Arkansas that year. So had we not played them, we probably would have been playing in the state championship. Unfortunately, I drew them round two, but you can watch same play. So watch, boom, see they go with the guards. And that is just nasty, okay? So you, you see them, they've been coached up. You run with the guards, they run with the guards. There it goes. Somebody was asking about how you handle really good five techniques. Watch number two right here. So that's a really good five technique. That gives a stud. I think this year he was a senior in sign somewhere. Uh, so we're going to double him. Boom, boom. Okay, then our slot, you see how we're blocking with our purse right there. When he ain't blocking, that's, that's about as physical as he can get on a good outside linebacker. Okay, we should have hit the edge on this, but remember, I'm not gonna yell at my guys if we cut it up early and get yards. I would have preferred he followed his, his, uh, his lead blocker out here, but shoot, we'll take five yards against a team that gave up like five points a game. And so it was just another way to protect jet sweep. And it's another way to really mess with teams because you're going against what they've been coached. And I feel like if you go against teams that what they've been coached, they start doubting. You know, they want to start doubting that, well, oh, Coach, you said this would happen. Well, that's not always the case. 
Danny. All right, our favorite play action. So I promised you guys I'd show you something I haven't put out very much. I think I've got it maybe on my coach tube stuff, but I haven't put it out on anything else, is we'll run F wheel. So win the conference this year, this was, I think this was fourth and six or something. We had to get a first down. That's back when I actually was good looking. Okay, we're gonna run jet. Uh, what we're going to run, we call F wheel. So F is this kid right here for us. He's going to run the wheel. Our X and our A are going to come inside. X runs a crack go. A just runs a crossing route to get in the way. Our quarterback does a terrible job of a play fake right here. But you see how much this works when you run jet, 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 jet against these teams. Okay. So you run jet, you're going to watch them bite. And when they bite, that F is wide open. He can hold that on an easier throw. But when he makes the throw, there's nobody there. And it's an easy play for us. Easy play for us because you can tell if it's man-to-man. -man. It wasn't in this case. But you see what's happening here. They've read Jet. So we freeze the one kid who bites on the play action. And the other kids have got to cover the other route. So it's just a natural void. If you wanted to get more in-depth on that, we would read the corner. So we would run the crack corner and run the wheel. If the corner covers the wheel, you throw the crack corner. Okay? In this case, as you can see, wide open. Okay? And this play came about by fourth and five, and I got my whiteboard out and drew it in the dirt. But now it's something that we, we love having. It's just something that complements us very, very well. Okay? All right, I've got 1044. So I want to show you guys draw real quick because I want to show all my runs and then I'll get any questions you guys have. So draw is the other good play for us off of the same action. Somebody was asking about you don't want to run your quarterback. That's fine. We'll run draw. Now, the great thing about draw is this. We're blocking strong belly. Okay, ignore this drawing. I don't know what I was doing there. We're blocking strong belly with our line. So they learn nothing new. They, they know how to block strong belly. They've been blocking strong belly forever. They block the same thing. Okay. But we're now going to run jet motion, so it looks like it's a trips pass. Okay, We're going to tell our F the only difference for you is your backfield action. You're going to act like you're blocking the edge, like you would be doing on jet sweep or on rollout pass for about a count of two or count of one. Then you're going to turn and hinge back inside and follow the guard like you would on belly. Our quarterback has got to be the salesperson, so ball comes up, makes the handoff, Hands come back up and he rolls out. And you'll see kind of what it looks like. This to us is a great two minute drive starter. Or, like in this case, we were about at the 40 near the end of the half, had to create something, and our quarterback had been struggling that night. It was not a good night for him. He'd thrown a couple picks, just wasn't playing very well. But we want to be a somewhat aggressive if it's there. And so that we ran this about 20 some odd seconds ago in the half, got us a field goal, which got us the lead at the half. Okay. Uh, let me go back. So here you go. Here's your motion. We're blocking strong belly. So line block strong belly, and you just see the massive hole that opens up. Okay. And as you, uh, we love doing it two minute drill. You can do it whenever you want to. It's a good safe third down play. It's a good safe play starting a two minute drive, and you can see what happens. And the beautiful thing in our mind is this we've already taught this. So this is not new. This is, our kids know how to block strong belly. It took two minutes to put that in, two minutes. All I had to do was work with the backfield action, okay? On our armbands, our receivers have an actual route because I've learned if you write down draw on receiver routes, they'll watch you run the ball. So they think they're running a route. You see them go full speed there because on their band, it tells them to run our flood. So they think they're running flood, okay? And then we're going to hand that ball off underneath it, okay? Let's go one more time. Strong belly blocking, nice and simple. It helps when the other team is – a little undisciplined, but it works even against teams that are disciplined because we run so much of that. Okay, I'm going to stop the share here, guys, and hit questions you guys may have. Um, after all, become like a joker. We run draw. Yeah, you, you can do whatever you want. I've tried to be – that's a good question, Reeves uh, – to be as creative as I can, but I've also tried to incorporate things that are already in, you know, so things that we already have in so it matches well with it. So if you already have – something in your offense that you can pair with jet motion because that's what we're wanting we're wanting to get the most bang for our buck so we've got something in and something else in and we can tie them together that's kind of the goal for us with jet motion we can run every single one of those plays you just watched without running motion 
We can line up in trips and run Q belly. We can run Q jet. We can run F jet and just toss it to them. We can run all that stuff without running any motion. But if we can tie it all together, now I can mess with the defense, you know. Um, jet drilled as a team, we do pods on jet. So the way that will work is basically our quick tackle, our X and A, and all, basically all our skill kids and our quick tackle will go work jet, okay? And if I wanna work the QB reading things there, that's when we would do that. So this year we're gonna run some read stuff. So we'll incorporate that in there. We'll all be the read, I'll move, and we'll give the tag to the quick tackle who he's blocking. But our X and our A are working together with our quick tackle on getting that wall going, just like you would do on Buck, okay? Our other linemen, so I say other linemen, our linemen, generally at that point, our guards are gonna be working pull wraps. So they're going with another coach working pull wraps because they're working belly blocking. And that puts our center, strong tackle, and tight end together. And then at that point, they can work cuts. They can work, uh, they can work uh, double teams with your tight end and tackle. Okay, So whatever you want to work on that. We can run any run we have, Mark, a good question, with our F. So if we want to run uh, quick F quick belly, we can call that. He just knows I step back and I get the ball. Okay, so anything we run, we can run and we can toss. We've run, uh, we've run jet toss. So we just toss the ball out to our F and he's running the jet. Okay, so we can run it all with him. But just for terminology and to keep the words short, our base stuff going quick is gonna be our B or our Q. Now if we wanna tag it, we can run it with him. Uh, jet motion with freeze, can yes. That's a, uh, we've done a couple of things we've done with jet motion. I didn't mention this. Uh, if I do another one with passes, we've had a lot of success running any motion and running what we call freeze, which is a dummy count. And we've also had a lot of success, let me see, with freezing. Oh, and running screens off it. So running motion, they bite hard and then running like a tunnel right behind where you ran the motion to. It sounds weird because you're drawing attention there but you're drawing the kind of attention you want to draw there. So we've actually run motion and then thrown the tunnel right to where the motion was going. And we run motion and thrown the little slow screen to our running back, okay? If nothing happens, we just tell the guy to motion all the way across and line up in trips. And now we're in trips and we can run the, probably the same play, okay? Uh, we have not pulled our tackles uh, in the past. I'm not saying we won't do it because our quick tackle could do it, but our strong tackle He's usually 300 and some odd pounds and doesn't move really well. So nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, one of the things we, we were playing around with this year before all this stuff went down was putting in basically GT off a of jet and reading that. I just don't know if we're going to have time with the timeline we've got because this year my quarterback will be able to read more of that stuff. So we're really interested in putting more of that in. These are great questions. Anything else, guys, I, I want to hit whatever you want, mainly dealing with runs, but I'll do another one with passes later on, too.